So let's take a look at what you can do using the Jamf Teacher app. This is the Jamf Teacher app you can find on your device. Go ahead and open this up. And you'll see that this mirrors those classrooms that I've had set up in both Apple Classroom, or it could be set up for you by your IT team through the Jamf portal itself, um, or equally, I can set those classes up here. You can also see we have lessons, and we'll talk about lessons in a different video as to the things that you can actually prescribe. The other access points are messaging directly with your students. Again, that can be turned on or turned off in Jamf, but this provides a different way to message your students. Access to resources. If I jump into this one, you'll see we can have access to applications that may be uh, tied to your account that you can then um, access directly onto your device. Any documents that you want quick access to and any profiles that might be shared out to organize the organization of your device itself. There's a section for app requests. Again, that's a future video. We'll talk about how that works and app updates, a place where obviously you can tap on here and get those updates on your device. But we're going to concentrate mostly on the classes section today and equally have a look at how that impacts on our student device on the right hand side. Now, one thing to highlight here is the student has a similar view to this when they open up the Jamf student. They'll see where their messages come from from that teacher. They'll see those app updates and access to those resources within their section as well. They also have the option to raise their hand in the class. So just as a simple activity, if they tap on raise their hand, it's going to signal to me as their teacher that I need some help. And you'll see that that pops up on my screen to tell me that that student needs some support. Now that could be in the classroom to just give me the, the nod that I need to go over, but equally they could be remote needing your help whilst they're at home doing some work. Now, one thing you're probably all screaming here is, I don't really want the children to be messaging me at eight o'clock at night. Well, rest assured, you can turn on the time scales for when those students would be able to do that. So if you only want to be available to a certain point of the evening, you can by all means set it so that they can't, and it just won't appear as an option on their screen. The raise hands function just disappears. Now let's jump into the classes itself. You'll see here, like I said, these are those classes that marry up actually with my Apple Classroom classes. So this is where it just completely ties in to how you're running things. And I can jump into classes and also start a new class from this point. To do that, same process as you would do if you were making one in Apple Classroom or in the Dramp portal itself. Give your class a name, a description, a colour and then it's just going to start that class for you. So I'm just going to say this is going to be a geography class. Uh, maybe it's for my year nine students. I'll make it green and tap save. I can then add students. It's going to show up on the screen waiting for students and you'll see on the student device, it's given me the notification to say this session is going to start. So I can tap on that notification, Oops. join the class, Without having to type in any codes, I'm now in that class and you'll see that student has now corresponded to my group. When I go back in, that student now appears on the screen here. Now we looked at this in the previous video, we can also obviously change all of that information about the student here, change their photographs, etc. So if they pop up without an image, you can go through that whole process we looked at previously. Now if we look across the top, there are lots of options that we can use within this. I'm going to start with this remote class, something that's obviously been on the forefront of people's minds recently, but something we can equally think about using going forward is how can we have remote teaching and still support our students with all of the other functions and features of the iPad? Well, remote class just enables me to share that link with the students by copying in that Zoom link or Teams link or whatever it is you're using, and it just sends a message through to the student to say that they have a session starting. They then tap on the link and it instantly goes through to that on their device. So no need to worry too much about emails or setting things in advance. You can send that out to them. We can also start lessons. Like I said, this is going to be a video that we'll look at in a separate section because there's a whole load of things that you can do within the lessons in terms of planning things. But when I start the lesson, it starts that uh, restriction on the student's device that we're going to be focused on something very, very specific. So do check out that video when it's available for you to see how you can actually use all those things.
The next two obviously are around restrictions and clearing them, but setting them in the first place. So let's jump into those restrictions. When I tap on restrictions on the device, it shows me all of those things that I can turn on or turn off. So I might want in this lesson to make sure that all the students are not having access to games, they're not having access to any entertainment or shopping or music. But actually, do you know what? Social media is fine for this one. Maybe I want them to be contacting people outside of the school to ask for opinions. Equally down the bottom, I can turn off other things. So maybe I don't want the game center on. We're not going to use messaging, but I definitely want them to be able to take screenshots because that's something that's going to be very beneficial to them. They don't need the app store, but they def definitely will need the camera and Safari. Now, if I jump back to the home screen for the students here and tap apply, this is just going to connect to that student's device and it's going to um, affect it to restrict those things on the screen. So therefore, anything I didn't want the students to have access to, they now no longer have access to on their device. And again, I can clear those restrictions just by tapping clear, restri clear restrictions, confirming it, and you'll see those apps instantly pop back up. So really, really fine control and just by the tap of a button from the teacher. We can also use app lock. So I can tap on this and I can choose which apps I want the students to be able to use. So let's say I want them to use the books, I want them to use the camera, I want them to use clips. I can just apply that setting now for this subject. And again, you'll see on the screen, it's just taken away all of those applications that I didn't want the students to use. It's left them still with a choice perhaps, but taken away those uh, Things that might just complicate the lesson might be a distraction to them in their learning. Again, I can tap done and again, clear those restrictions with a simple tap and it will return their device to full functionality. Weblock works in the same way. I can lock them into Safari and I can even lock them into specific websites. So if I knew I wanted them to go to a specific news website or a very specific learning website, I can add the link here and make sure that they just use it in that way. Think just asking them to do some research for 10 minutes, but you want them to be really focused on the research and not get distracted to find out about last night's sports scores or whatever it might be. Again, very easily, you can just set a, a restriction to be cleared instantly after a certain period of time. So you don't have to remember to go back into it to clear it when they move on to the next phase of their learning. Another thing that's useful is to be able to get their attention. Now let's imagine that a student was deep within some of their work. They might be doing some fantastic keynote work, building up a, a fantastic presentation, and I want their attention. By tapping on attention, I can apply this. I could put a message on it, but it's just going to take them out of what they were doing to focus them back onto what I might want them to do. So it brings them back into the student application they can't move out of this, so the home button now does not allow them to come out of it, so it's really locking them into the student app. But this is a place where they can still ask me questions, but really I've kind of taken away the use of the device from a learning tool, but I'm still using it as a teaching tool because they can still message me, they can still raise their hands if they need to ask a question. Something that's really, really useful. We're kind of holding the technology in the classroom, but we're kind of limiting that we don't want it to be everything all of those times. Again, I'll just quickly clear that off. And now the student will be able to come out of that uh, restricted page so they can actually do some more stuff. Just make sure that that's actually cleared. There we go. Okay, next one, installing apps. If there were apps that I just wanted to quickly get onto the student device, as long as they've already been um, cleared through the Jamf instance, I can find those apps here and push them out to the device. Probably not something that you're going to do just on the fly in a lesson. We would necessarily advise teachers to kind of have that research process, but you never know there might be a moment where you really want them to have this app um, and then they can have that on their device. It's just going to push it out to them instantly within the session. We've talked about messages before. Again, just sending those messages, making sure that students are kept up to date. Bluetooth, again, just making sure that I've got Bluetooth on the user devices in case I need to connect to them in any way. It could be airdrop, those sorts of things. So just making sure that that's all set up. Oh, I seem to have lost connection for one second on the student device. There we go, we're back. 
Um, and then if you are using shared iPads, and again, this will be a future video where we can look at the whole kind of process of shared iPads, you can take control of those. The final ones to just look at, if at any point I need to add additional students, I can tap add students, or I can create groups of specific students. In this demo, I'm at home, I've only got one other device with me, but I could simply just create a group and have multiple students in different groups. And then I would have that functionality to do all of those things, but not to everyone in the class at one time. Now, if I just choose that one student I have here for the moment, at the top, we're looking at controlling the whole class. If I tap on the individual student though, you'll see that I now have access to all of those things for individual students. And this could equally be a group of students. So you don't necessarily have to take control of everyone's devices if that's not what you're asking uh, students to focus on within that session. So there we go. Simple use of the Jamf Teacher app and how that works on the student's device. A quick overview of the Jamf Student app and how they can utilize that to uh, get documents, etc. But equally, that raise hand function to get focused attention that they need from the teacher. And the whole thing to remember here is this works equally as well in the classroom as it does in a remote learning environment.